Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Karen Cruzier. Phillips C News is live at noon. Topping the news at this time, the contract for the Ocean Flower 2 passenger ferry has been terminated. This was confirmed by the Minister of Works and Transport, Rohan Sinanan, this morning. C News understands the Minister met with the Board of the Port Authority last night when the decision was made. The Ocean Flower 2 left its port of origin in Korea on June 29th and was expected in Port of Spain since July 26. However, there were several delays. Over the weekend, Minister Sinanan confirmed that the vessel was in Panama. This morning, he said the decision to cancel the contract was made because of the inability to deliver the vessel on time. A new tender is expected to be issued soon. And the Minister of Works and Transport says he supports any decision taken by the Board of the Port Authority on this matter. I've had full confidence in the port, and because the port authority is doing what they're supposed to do is why the recommendation is to cancel the contract. So I have full confidence in the port, and I endorse whatever decision they take. We will swim. That's what Minority Leader Watson Duke is proposing to do if the issues with the inter-island sea bridge aren't fixed soon. Mr. Duke's comment has come in light of the cancellation of the contract for the Ocean Flower 2 vessel to service the sea bridge between Trinidad and Tobago. I'm hereby calling upon the Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, to take over the Ministry of Works and Transport and ensure that Tobagonians are given with immediate effect a reliable sea bridge, one where passengers can go to and fro one where persons can plan their lives in a timely and a reasonable basis. He raised the fact that one passenger ferry is operating between Trinidad and Tobago, but not at full capacity. He said this cannot be allowed to continue for much longer as Tobagonians continue to feel the effects. Mr. Duke said he will take action against it. Put the best board in place, put the best minister in place, and please, give Tobago justice. If not, we the people of Tobago will force to protest by swimming from Tobago to Trinidad. We will swim. Well, the Minister of Works and Transport, Rohan Sanan, says he will not resign based on calls made by advocacy group fixing TNT. The call from the group came in light of issues surrounding the procurement of vessels to service the inter-island sea bridge when the superfast Galicia left. This morning, the minister said before calling for his resignation, head of the group, Kirk Waith, should answer questions about procurement at the Housing Development Corporation. Rishi Harinanan has more. The Minister of Works and Transport, Rohan Sinanan, said fixing TNT's call for him to be fired is based on the fact that he did not allow the renewal of the contract for the Superfast Galicia. According to the minister, he was only doing what was right. When I pointed out to, to Fixing TNT, if he was in agreement of me signing on a contract with no procurement, no tendering process for over $400 million, he became silent. Fixing TNT seems to have two stands in Trinidad and Tobago. One, calling for public procurement, and two, when it is not in, in, in his favor or for what or who he supports, he seems to be um, thinking that we should have two stands on that. Minister Sinanan said as the Minister of Works and Transport, he has only one way to do things, and that's the proper way. Which is, if there's a $400 million contract to, to, to be had by anybody, they must go through proper procurement. I, I believe in that proper procurement must take place, and if questions are to be answered, they must be answered properly. I, I don't support fixing TNT. Fixing TNT, Mr. Kirkway may have certain questions that he may want to have answered on procurement at the HDCC. On Tuesday, Fixin TNT also called for the recently appointed board of the Port Authority to be fired. The minister said he stands by whatever decision the board makes. Mr. Waith also wants the acting police commissioner, Stephen Williams, to launch a police investigation into the procurement of the Ocean Flower 2 and the Cabo Star to determine if there was any criminal misconduct and a similar probe with regard to the superfast Galicia. Rishi Harinanan, C News. This is the C News Live report at noon. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctptt.com or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at C News Live.
To some crime news now, a suspected car thief was shot and killed by police this morning. Seniors understands a report of a stolen purple B13 car was made and police on patrol in the Takarigua area said at around 2 a.m. they spotted a similar vehicle near St. Michael's Road. They said they attempted to stop the vehicle when one of the two occupants reportedly opened fire on them. They retaliated and one of the suspects was shot. The other suspect was said to have gotten out of the vehicle and escaped. Police said they found a gun inside the car. A manhunt has been launched for the second suspect. An 18-year-old young woman is among five people arrested in a police raid at a house in Arima. A statement from the police says a pistol, a quantity of ammunition, and a bulletproof vest were also seized. Police said at around 5 a.m. they executed a search warrant at a house at Sherwood Park. The other four arrested are men. Two of them are aged 26, and the two others ages 22 and 23. Following the raid, officers went to a bushy area at Sherwood Park and found one black Smith & Wesson pistol and one loaded magazine containing 12 rounds of 9mm ammunition. No one was arrested. There has been a decline in the number of applications for master's programs at the University of the West Indies. According to U.S. principal Brian Copeland, the decline is not only at his institution. He also spoke about registration for undergraduate programs at the facility. Rishi Harinanan has more. Pro-Vice-Chancellor and campus principal at the University of the West Indies, Professor Brian Copeland, says there is concern about a decline in the number of people registering for master's programs at his institution and institutions around the country. However, he couldn't say the reason for this. When I speak to other tertiary level institutions as well, I'm seeing some. To say whether it's gate or not, we, again, we, we can't say. I think there's a change in the the thinking of the person who is looking at a, um, um, a tertiary level education, be that undergrad or postgraduate. And we have to do some deep, some deep dives into what is really going on to determine how to, to respond to suits. U itself is also changing the way in which it will deliver its programming. It's taking a more proactive approach to doing it. You'll see that kicking in from next year. On the topic of undergraduate programs, Professor Copeland said it is too soon to say if there will be a drastic decline in the number of applicants. He said it is now to wait and see what happens when CAPE results come out. Once you reduce funding, that you will see people who will not want to take it up. There are people who have indicated that they, they, they will proceed even if they don't get funding for GATE. But the upshot of all of that is that we really can't see um, if the numbers are going to drop and if they're going to drop significantly or even if they could go up. There are a couple of faculties who have actually seen a higher number of applicants and have made a higher number of offers than, than, than normal. On Tuesday, the Minister of Education, Anthony Garcia, said CAPE results will be released next week. Rishi Harinanan, C News. Now for the weather. Cloudy periods with showers over broad areas. Thunder shower activity is likely during the afternoon and evening. Conditions will become settled by nightfall with a few lingering showers. Seas are slight, waves up to 1.5 meters in open waters near calm in sheltered areas. Professional help has been sought for the woman police officer who was photographed in a compromising position on a couch in her SRP uniform. This from the president of the Police Service Social and Welfare Association, Inspector Michael Seals, as he noted this is a very difficult time for her. Based on what our membership said, our membership has taken the position that she should not be dismissed. There are calls from different quarters that she should be immediately dismissed, but we are saying no. She needs a fair hearing. We are saying yes, she, she has to be severely punished, but she should not be dismissed from the police service. Mr. Seals said this incident highlights the need for there to be a distinction between privately hired officers and officers who fall under the purview of the police commissioner. Police service into disrepute, um, and the point is that she doesn't even belong to the police service. So that is where a lot of problems are created. So if there is a separation in terms of the, 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 the wear and the way the uniform looks and the colors of the uniform, we will have a difference in terms of our opinion. The Community Policing Secretariat of the Police Service says the Secretary of the Bayshore Police Youth Club is WPC Vanessa Noel of the Monrepo Police Station and not Anisha Eiffel. 
Eiffel was recently charged by the police with possession of a firearm and ammunition and was reported as being the secretary of the Bayshore Police Youth Club. The TTPS said WPC Noel has been the secretary and leader of the Bayshore Police Youth Club, formerly the Bayshore Marabella Police Youth Club, since its inception in 2011. The Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force has assured it will continue to work with the police service to get rid of the ills facing the country. This from newly appointed Chief of Defense Staff Hayden Pritchard. Mr. Pritchard was speaking at the Defense Force handover of command parade on Tuesday. We will continue to aggressively engage our partners at home and abroad as we work together to treat with the various menaces now facing our society. We will continue and increase our support to the police service. A failed police service is not an option for the Trinidad Tobago Defense Force, and I am sure neither for the government and people of our country. He explained some of the measures the TTDF will pursue to work with the police service. In areas such as strategic and operations planning, logistics, and command and control. We remain committed to a strong police service and will do everything in our power to ensure its success. While well, Captain Hayden Pritchard was promoted to the rank of Commodore and appointed Chief of Defense Staff by President Anthony Carmona, effective August 9th, Captain Pritchard has 32 years service in the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force. Meanwhile, Colonel Archelus Ellen Phillips, who has 34 years service in the Defense Force, has been promoted to Brigadier General and appointed Vice Chief of Defense Staff effective July 26. The present Chief of Defense Staff, Rodney A. Smart, has been promoted to the rank of Major General and will proceed on retirement from Wednesday. During his address at the handover ceremony on Tuesday, Mr. Smart said there is need to work together with all stakeholders locally, regionally, and internationally for a common interest. He highlighted an initiative in the maritime domain. Our God is now able to work in closer, co in closer cooperation with other national institutions, such as the Customs and Excise Division, the Immigration Department, the Police Organized Crime Narcotics and Firearms Bureau, the Transnational Organized Crime Unit, and the Counter Trafficking Unit. The Airports Authority of Trinidad and Tobago says it has approved a request to firm the departure of pilgrims journeying to Mecca for the annual Hajj pilgrimage. It said, however, no other requests have been made. In a statement, the authority said it customarily approves requests for use of its facilities by various religious and cultural groups, and the authority has been in contact with the group who made the request for filming, and they have expressed satisfaction with the approvals granted. The authority reminded the public that the Piaco International Airport is outfitted with a non-denominational prayer room, which can be accessed by all airports users and which affords everyone the opportunity to reflect in a peaceful and private environment. We begin with news of football. Anton Cornell has been appointed as technical director of the TTFA for a second time. This was announced by the association today. Cornell, whose position is for a two-year term, will take over the position previously held by Mohammed Issa, who will now serve as director of football. Cornell also previously held the position of technical director of the TTFA, being appointed in January 2012, before taking up an appointment as FIFA development officer for part of the Caribbean. Under his portfolio, Cornell will oversee the TTFA's long-term football development plan with a special emphasis on the national youth teams, accreditation of academies, registration of coaches, research, and coach education. To cricket now, the Trinbago Knight Riders will be in action this evening as CPL action continues at the Queen's Park Oval in Point of Spain. TKR will be going up against defending champions, the Jamaica Talawas. The home team has won their first two games against the St. Lucia Stars and will be looking to continue that winning momentum today. 
Talawas have lost one of their two games played against the Barbados Tridents. The game at the Oval this evening will start at 8 p.m. While it's mission accomplished for Trinidad and Tobago stickmen who reached the semifinals of the prestigious Pan Am Cup Series in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This, the local men edged Brazil 2-1 in their last pool game to finish second in Group B and will play in the Pan American Cup semifinal against Group A winners Argentina on August 10th at 5 p.m. Marcus Pascal scored the lone goal in the first half of the game to give TNT the lead. But Brazil equalized in the 41st minute to get back in the game, which was played on a gilt edge throughout. But the talented Malvern youngster Teague Marcano placed TNT back in the league in the 47th minute, which held up and helped secure the win for TNT, who are hoping to improve on their third place finish from four years ago in Toronto, Canada. The winner of this tournament will qualify for the FIH World Cup and the top six teams will qualify for the Pan American Cup 2021. And that's it for sport. And that's how we end our seniors report at noon. I'm Karen Kuzer Phillip. Remember, for up to date and breaking news throughout the day, you can visit the seniors website at ctptt.com. Do have a good afternoon.